Hello and welcome to Dynamic Amortization with Scan. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this short video, we're gonna create a dynamic amortization schedule using the Scan function and some other functions. Exercise one. In this first exercise, we're just gonna get warmed up with the sequence and scan functions. First, sequence. Now the sequence function basically creates a sequence of numbers and there's many arguments we can use to fine tune that sequence. Equal sequence. In this case, we're gonna use the rows argument only and we're gonna say create six rows. Optionally, you can specify the columns, start, and step values. Close function and enter. And now we get a sequence of six values. We could change this to 10, we could change this to five, and we can change this to three. Now let's talk about the scan function. If we say the initial value is zero, and the array we want it to operate on is all of the results returned by the sequence function, and we want to use the sum function to add it up close function and enter. And as you can see, it's giving us a running total. Now the scan function can do a lot more than that, but to create our dynamic amortization schedule, that's all we're gonna need it to do, is to create a running total. Now that we're warmed up with sequence and scan, let's head to the next exercise, exercise two. Now basically, we want to allow the user to enter the number of months, the annual interest rate, the loan amount, and then we want to compute the payment, and then we want to create this dynamic amortization schedule. First, let's start with payment. We're gonna use the payment function to calculate the monthly payment. The rate is the annual interest rate divided by 12 because we want monthly payments. The number of months is here and the present value is here. Close function and enter. And as we can see, the monthly payment is 4,280.37. Now that's being expressed as a negative number. So there's a couple of different ways to flip the sign. In this case, I'm just gonna flip the sign of the present value argument and hit enter. Now this is expressed as a positive number and that's just a little easier to work with. Now we wanna create a dynamic amortization schedule. Any idea which function could help us with the period? If you said sequence, good for you. Equal sequence and the number of rows is the number of months. Close function and enter. Now let's skip the beginning balance column for now. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now, the current period interest. We're gonna use the I payment function to calculate that. Once again, the rate is our annual interest rate divided by 12. The period is going to be this, but instead of pointing to just B15, we wanna point it to the entire array returned by the sequence function. To do that, we use the spill operator, which is that pound or hash, comma, the total number of periods is this, comma, and the present value is this. Close function and enter. And this returns the interest for each period. Again, I wanna flip the sign. Again, there's a few different ways to do that. So I'm just gonna put a negative sign in front of C8, enter. And now we get this expressed as a positive value. Now to calculate the amount of the payment applied to principal each period, we're gonna use the principal payment function. And again, we're gonna go with a rate divided by 12. The period is once again, B15, but we're gonna use the spill operator, comma, the number of total periods is this, and the present value again is negative this. Close function and enter. And now we get the amount of principal applied to the loan for each monthly payment. Now for the ending balance. We're gonna use the scan function. The initial value is 50,000. The array is this, but we actually want it to operate on the entire range. So we use the spill operator and the function is gonna be sum, close function and enter. And what this is basically doing is it's starting with the initial value of 50,000 and then it's adding the principal from each monthly payment. And that's kind of going in the opposite direction. So we have a couple of options. If we wanted principal to be expressed as a negative number, we could do that, that would be fine. If on the other hand, we want principal to be expressed as a positive number, we can just put the negative in front of E15. Either way is fine. And now we get the ending balance per period. Now let's circle back to the beginning balance. Here, what we can basically do is say, add the principal spill operator to the ending balance spill operator and enter. And now this is fully dynamic. So if you wanna look at a six month amortization schedule, we could do that, 12 month, 360, 240, <laughs> 120, all right? And let's go back to 12 so it all fits on the screen. And this is a fully dynamic amortization schedule. And maybe you wanna have some additional informational columns added to your amortization schedule. We'll tackle those in the next exercise. Exercise three. Let's say we actually want the payment amount displayed within the amortization schedule. And regardless of where you wanna insert the payment column, the function is basically gonna be equals, and we can use the sequence function. The number of rows we want is this, comma, we don't need any columns, 
comma, the starting value is gonna be equal to our payment amount, and we'll use zero for the step value so that that payment amount doesn't change. Close function and enter. And that's nice if we wanna see the payment amount in the amortization schedule. What if we wanted a column that showed the running total of interest paid? Well, for that, we can use the scan function. The initial value is zero. The array is our interest column, spill operator, and the function is sum. Close function and enter. And this is gonna show a running total of the amount of interest paid. If we want to do the same thing for total principal, we can use the scan function. The initial value is zero. The array is our principal. We'll use the spill operator. Function is sum, close function and enter. And now again, this is fully dynamic. So if someone changes this to six, we got it. 10, we got it. 360, we got it, 120, we got it, and we'll go back to 12 so everything fits on the same page. And this is how we can use a handful of dynamic array functions to generate a fully dynamic amortization schedule. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.